Hi, everybody. Welcome to this second edition of Money Talks. Uh, in this opportunity, we're going to talk about Starden Therapeutics. And, uh, of course, together with me hosting this event is Silvina Moschini. Silvina, how are you? I'm good. I'm super excited to talk about money and unicorns. Absolutely, absolutely. Today, can 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 you can you give me a, just a little bit of a of a taste of what we're gonna talk about? Gladly. You know, I am one of the executive producers of a show called Unicorn Hunters. We are on the hunt for the next unicorns. We are hoping to find many global unicorns in our show, and we are looking for companies. We are looking for companies that have the potential to be worth a billion dollars. But the important twist, Diego, is that we are inviting the audiences, millions of people, because by now we have over 10 million views, to co-invest with me, with Steve Wozniak, with Mo Bella, with Alex Konanikin, with Rossi Rios, with Lance Bass, in these amazing companies that we believe will change and reshape the future as we know it. So today we have one of our prospective unicorns, Pedro, Pedro Lichtinger, who is the CEO of Startup Therapeutics. It's an amazing company that it's on the uh, biotech business. Hello, Pedro. Welcome to the show. Hello. How are you? Apologies <laughs> and, for a little late, but uh, I couldn't get in. We are, we are very happy to have you, Pedro. And we were just talking about Startup Therapeutics and, and yourself. So I'll uh, defer up now to, to, to Diego to make the proper introduction so you can tell us about everything that it's uh, what you're doing at the show and what you're doing at the Staten Therapeutics to make the world a much better place. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, Pedro Lichtinger uh, has worked for decades leading uh, a major, a major, major uh, pharmaceutical company uh, around the, in different markets of the world. Uh, Pedro, you have led uh, the introduction of new drugs, new 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 solutions, new treatments uh, for a number of of diseases. Uh, you have been at the forefront of of the international pharmaceutical industry, and now you are developing a new product. Before we get into that, and we're going to get into that in detail, uh, could you please, Pedro, let me know, let us know, sorry, a little bit about about uh, starting. Um, what, what, what is it about and what kind of treatments are you right now working on? Well, first, uh, let me say we are a platform company, which means we have a technology that delivers multiple products. Uh, we are going to talk about one specifically, but we have another one that is more advanced in its clinical development and three in preclinical development and a list of 35 key targets uh, that uh, we are pursuing. Uh, the platform of, is very simple. What it does takes highly successful uh, drugs and it, uh, it, uh, that are already approved and in the market. We know their efficacy. We know their side effects profile. And what we do is we change the way we give them to the patient so that we can improve the efficacy and tolerability by giving it continuously. That means we don't have the high peaks at the early stage of taking a pill, and we don't have the uh, periods of time during the day where there is virtually no drug anymore in the patient. We continuously target the optimal level of the drug, and as a result, we end up giving up to 90% less drug uh, when compared to the original oral or injectable. It wow. fascinated me when we have Pedro in the show, and this is one of the many reasons why we invited him to be one of our prospect unicorns in Unicorn Hunters. He uh, doesn't reinvent the wheel, which is a very, very smart uh, way to go. He can tell us a little bit more about how much time he saves and how much uh, resources he, he saves by taking blockbuster drugs and deploying them with the new delivery method that is much more effective for the patient, but also that is much more effective also uh, in terms of the results, not only for uh, the fact that when you take drugs in a traditional manner, a big chunk of the drug that is taken, it gets released when we go to the bathroom, like if we take them orally. When you use the transdermal patches, the 
the content of the drug. The drug is released slowly and at the right time and in the right quantity. So it's highly transformational. And Pedro was telling me that for patients that has, uh, are going through chemotherapy, that means that one of the very, very sad and very painful effects that they suffer, it completely vanished with the drug, which is something that it enhanced the quality of life of the patients, but also that in some other type of tumors with another drugs with the same release method, they managed to reduce the size of the tumors by 80%. And I would love Pedro to tell us more about that because I do understand that this is one of the secret sauce of why statin therapeutics is here to disrupt a big part of the biotech industry, rethinking how the drugs are delivered. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, one of those programs, the one that is the most exciting. Uh, it is the third largest medicine in terms of sales, of revenues um, <clears throat> in the market. It sold $12.1 billion last year and is still growing significantly, even though it's at the end of its, uh, of its life. And uh, we conducted a comparative study with them in the traditional multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer, the largest blood cancer. And, and what we saw was astonishing, it was unprecedented. What we saw is that the, the uh, uh, animals without any medicine had saw their implanted tumor grow 25 times. The animals with that product orally saw that growth contained to five times. The animals that were given the continuous delivery saw the tumors shrink 80 percent uh, this is unprecedented translated into significant extensions of a uh, of life uh, that uh, we are now hoping we will see in humans as we move into human trials we are planning our first in human trial uh, in the last quarter of this year it will be fast and by middle of next year we are in the in the uh, uh, trials that are really determining and starting to show the improvements that uh, we expect to have in both efficacy and tolerability so patients can live longer, better. And Pedro, just, just one tiny thing. When, when do you expect uh, FDA approval for, for the whole delivery method and, and, and the combination of the drug and the delivery method? First, it's important to say that we met with the FDA. Uh, the FDA has agreed on what's called the 505B2 route, which means we don't do all of the preclinical work, uh, six years and tens of millions of dollars saved. And they have uh, also provided guidance on, on, on the design for our trial uh, uh, at the end of this year. And those results will be available in April of next year. And, and uh, so the FDA then moves into uh, phase two and, and if we get the quality and the, uh, of, of uh, data, the impact on patients that we're expecting, we will apply to what's called the breakthrough designation, which means you don't have to conduct um, further trials to, co to make this available to patients. You do have to conduct the trials, but you conduct them while you're selling. So we would expect potentially a registration in 2025 which coincides with the, with the patent expiration of the original molecule. And I, I, we do have a patent for continuous delivery uh, of this drug and the family of drugs to which it belongs. We also have formulation patents and are working on expanding that patent because that is what will uh, actually protect us. And it's also important to say that the, we are going uh, to target CLL, which is the second largest blood cancer. That is what's called an orphan disease, which gives you seven, seven years of protection that are offered by the FDA in alignment with the Senate uh, so that they, we can get to um, uh, orphan diseases. So, so we are very excited, really a breakthrough program entering a multi-billion dollar market that we expect to expand and over time re replace the original molecule in significant segments of, a, of its present use. So, Pedro, let's talk about unicorns, shall we? When we are looking at the unicorns, we are thinking about a certain conditions that need to be checkmarked to um, consider a company a suitable candidate to grow to many, many 
millions, um, billion dollars uh, valuation. So in particular, we are talking about your company, we're talking about a platform that you are starting with certain drugs, blockbuster drugs, with this repur uh, repurpose method of delivery that is much more effective and much more tolerable for people as well. But we are talking about also another factor. You have a massive addressable market out there because sadly, many, many, many families, pretty much all the families around the world has been touched by someone who has cancer. So this brings something that for me, particularly as an investor, it's very valuable, the purpose, doing something that it's incredibly good for the world in addition to potentially bring significant revenues. So that's also very important. But another factor when you are looking at unicorns is the expertise and the charisma of the founder and the leadership team. And here we have a man that has seen thousands of medical trials, that has lead companies like Pfizer in multi-countries environment, especially in Europe, originally from Latin America, Orgulloso Mexicano for all of us that are from the region. And a man with a vision that also managed to not only secure funding before, but also to attract the top leading authorities in the field to their company. So Pedro, I would like for you to brag a little bit about you without being embarrassed for doing so, because we really need the audience that is watching the show to understand why they need to be in Pedro's team, why they need to back Start on Therapeutics and be part of the journey of this company that is in a mission to save cancer patients. So please, the floor is yours. Well, th thank you for your, your kind words. Uh, you know, uh, I, I spent most of my career at Pfizer. Uh, I was a president of Europe. I spent 12 years in Europe. Uh, so I am familiar with multiple countries, multiple health systems. Of course, uh, going into multiple therapeutic areas to breadth of portfolio of products that Pfizer has. And then I was promoted to lead the global uh, primary care business, which I actually managed on behalf of the corporation, the pipeline of Pfizer uh, between 100 and 120 clinical programs every year. So I was able to also understand uh, how to optimize a clinical program, how to accelerate, how to respond to challenges that surface and, 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 and improve significantly the probability that that particular trial will achieve its objective. Uh, since then, when I left Big Pharma, I have managed successfully two other biotechnology companies, and I have co-founded this company basically because I became very passionate about what, what, what it can achieve. Uh, I have a brother who has met metastasized cancer um, of the prostate. And, uh, and so I can see not only the impact of the cancer, but also the deterioration of the quality of life as he's given aggressive medicines that weaken him, that they make him nauseous, that give muscle pains. And, and as Silvina said, anyone that has had somebody in their family that they has been touched by cancer, they understand uh, we do have many treatments that are effective, but uh, most of them come with a deterioration of quality of life, and they only extend life, unfortunately, for a short period of time. Our dream, my dream, is to convert significant segments of cancer into chronic diseases where the patient can live tens of years, 20 years, and actually be able to live a high quality life and not, not be compromised by all of these side effects. And, and we believe we, we can achieve this in the targeted segments that we are pursuing. I would like to uh, just uh, say one little thing. If you have questions, please, please uh, don't, don't, don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, we're seeing a few comments, but if you have questions for uh, Pedro, uh, please go ahead and 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 post them uh, here in the in the chat window. Uh, we're going to be happy to to accommodate them. Um, Silvina, uh, I would like to 
uh, discuss with you a little bit, and, and, and of course with Pedro, um, which are the, the funding opportunities and, and how these work? Um, it, 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 it's interesting to, to try and understand in which position, uh, starting actually with Pedro uh, at the helm, uh, starting is right now and, and where it is going to in terms of funding. As you know, I'm a technology entrepreneur and I raise money for my company, almost $50 million, going to retail investors around the world using the Jobs Act, which is the um, um, regulation, the instrument that President Obama brought into the market, the Jumpstart Business Act, that enables people from around the world to buy a small part of companies that has significant potential. And when we started Unicorn Hunters, we saw that we have a massive opportunity to give power to the people, to democratize the access to investment opportunities to normal people from around the world who uh, can invest in companies like Pedro's very uh, easily through uh, watching the show, asking the proper questions, educating themselves, and then submitting their application for investment starting at a small amounts and then hopefully seeing how great they are doing and investing and also following up and recommending their friends to invest to this part of this journey. Because we saw that this will allow the world to have more millionaires instead of more billionaires because it was impossible before now for normal individuals, the ones that have disposable income, but they are not like perhaps like millionaires or billionaires to have a family offices managing their funds to be part of the companies that are shaping up the world and transforming the reality as it is. Because these startups always get funded or traditionally got funded by the accelerators, the venture capitalists, the private equity firms. And we normal people were left behind and we saw that it didn't make any sense. But also giving the entrepreneurs the opportunity to have an army of advocates from around the world, people who will want to see Pedro succeed, who will want to see starting therapeutics and who will put not only their money, but also their love, their support, their engagement to make the company a massive success. Working alongside with entrepreneurs like Pedro to build the new reality of companies. So this is how we see it. We see global equity crowdfunding or what we call the global private offering as a tool to give people in the house the opportunity to invest a small amount of money just to start in companies that have the potential to be the next SpaceX, to be the next Pfizer, to be the next Facebook at a stage in which they can still make a gigantic difference and work together supporting the entrepreneurs to make it happen through social media, through connections, through any mean in which they can support in addition to money. So democratizing is the key to making the world much better and giving people the opportunity, why not, to become richer. This is what we call our show, the gender enrichment, entertainment that can make you rich. And uh, we have just received our quest a question from Philip uh, who would like to go over uh, this. Are you doing any human testing currently? If so, what face? You we have brought a, it up a minute ago, uh, but but please expand on it. Yes, uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, two programs that they uh, are entering are in the clinic. One of them has completed phase one, and it will be entering phase two. It has completed it, of course, successfully. We have met with the FDA and have agreed on the phase two that is starting in November of this year. So that will be a phase two clinical program. The other one is entering phase one in, 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 by the end of this year. And um, we'll enter phase two in, in June, July of next year. Uh, so just, just one tiny thing, uh, one, th one tiny clarification, uh, Pedro. So you're talking about a product portfolio, not yeah. one product for the company. And of course, investments would go to the company and towards the, the success of the portfolio and not a single product, right? Absolutely. And that is very important to understand because you have 
what we call in the industry multiple shots on goal. That means if one program gets delayed or has some hiccups in, the, in a recruiting or whatever, you have the other one. So this is a, it mitigates the binary a traditional understanding of biotechnology that it either works or it doesn't. When you have two and, and we have five, um, you know, the probability that one will make it is much, much higher than when you only have one. Sorry, I interrupted you after two. Yeah. In a portfolio of companies, like you don't play with just one trick pony. So you have much value for your investors because you are distributing the risk among many different trials and this is a platform. So this is potentially a scalable at massive exponential scale because what you are patenting is the protocol, the process, the technology to deliver drugs. Now you're starting with cancer, with certain type of cancers, but it can go into many different areas and places and it can make the company like really, really massive. Let me just yeah. another thing. Hey, important. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me, Pedro, one sec, because there's a question right now underscoring uh, Sylvie's point, right? How is the IP protected? Are there significant barriers to competition? Just, just, uh, just continuing what, what, Sylvie was, what Sylvina was saying a minute ago. Yes, uh, the, the way biotechnology and pharmaceuticals work is through patent protection. In addition to that, you have the protections that the FDA grants to you for, uh, how do you say, uh, bringing innovation to patients. So in our case, as I said before, we have seven years of protection provided by the FDA because we're targeting a, a CLL, which is an orphan disease. And then secondly, we have filed a patent for continuous delivery of the main molecule and then nobody can develop a, a slow release a oral, a depot injection that they release so slowly. All of it is protected by our patent and, and in addition, we have specific formulation patents that strengthen our protection and methods of use patent. So, so uh, uh, what we do over time is increase the umbrella of protection. And this gives me the opportunity to talk, I believe, very strongly what makes a difference in a company's people. And I have been able to attract to my board uh, Dr. Roy Waldron, who was for 25 years leading the, the intellectual property department at Pfizer. He retired two years ago. He's now on our board and he oversee, oversees our patent protection. Uh, so he's one of the most experienced lawyers in the area. And we feel very comfortable that we will have protection until 2040 or longer. Wow. Well, one important question that I would like to, to bring as well, Diego, if you allow me to steal the interviewer role, because, you know, I, I also love to do this. And, and having Pedro here, I think it's super important that people on the other side that is considering an investment in startup therapeutics, what will it be for, for them? What is your exit strategy? What is the timeline? Uh, what, how much money you are raising? So can we talk a little bit more about money? Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is, you know, what drives value in biotechnology is when data surfaces. Uh, we are in a, in a unique position that 10 to 15 months from now, we will have the results of the phase one study. Uh, with those results in hand and the ongoing phase two of the other program, we would expect a three to four fold increase in value and that's when we will target our ipo and we took the decision to bypass when we founded the company the typical uh, venture capital model uh, and we did it for multiple reasons the most important is we did not want to relinquish control of the company and uh, we do not want to have in the company conflicting interests of a uh, of timing of exit of uh, levels of investment uh, etc and as a result of that have been successful for the last four years to raise 27 million dollars with which we have taken the company to where we are uh, we have done it by having 250 investors over half of them have participated in four consecutive uh, capital raises and and you know unicorn hunters was a natural extension of what we do 
it is going from 2,500 investors potentially to 2,500. And by doing that, we're targeting a raise of $20 million now, and we are targeting a raise of $50 million when we do the IPO. So the first opportunity for liquidity for investors is going to be 10 to 14 months from now, and the, the, uh, with a significant um, uh, booster um, in value because of the data we're bringing. And also when we compare, we did a comparison with six similar companies that are at the same stage of development that have a portfolio, and they ended up doing their IPO in the six to $700 million valuation. Thereafter, as we enter into the phase two, you, you now have even more opportunities uh, for value creation and you can get another three or four. So it will depend on the, on the um, patience that, they, that investors have with us, whether they can really uh, materialize the, the multiples that we expect over, over the medium term in the next two to three years. Uh, we expect to surpass the, the unicorn status uh, probably in the next two years uh, and, and to, to go far beyond that as we bring all of these products to market. Each one of these indications... Thank you, Decacorn status, and I'm willing to let you have my baby unicorn here, Pedro. But on that, another thing that I would like to point out is I love that you're super capital efficient because... You know, coming, I have been lived in Silicon Valley for quite some time. Like some entrepreneurs feel that they need to raise like 300, 500 million dollars. And yeah, it's super easy to reach a unicorn status if you like lost total control of the company because they injected so much capital in the, the company. So companies become like, therefore, extremely inefficient. But the early investors get hurt. And when you take an approach like the one that you are taking, you are protecting your retail investors, your high net worth individuals that supported you, and you still have the control of the company as well to drive your vision because this is your company. This is Pedro's vision to cure cancer and improve the life of many people from around the world. And when you don't have control because you have so many cross interests behind it's extremely difficult to do it so i command this approach and and i'm super honored as executive producer of unicorn hunters to to have you in our team and to be in pedro's team supporting startup therapeutics as an investor myself i do believe that as i said like your company can do magic in the life of people and i love people who have pnl experience who have industry experience overall who has the network who have done this before and who has entrepreneurial spirit to move to cut the red ribbon easily something that all that we come from corporate america now is super hard to do when you are in a large corporations and innovate experimenting for innovating and especially when this has a purpose so i want to say thank you very 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 much from my end as your host in the show as your fellow entrepreneur we need more Pedro, Pedro's in this world we need more people doing companies that will make life for everyone's better and will make investors millionaires and hopefully some of them if they put a lot of money eventually billionaires as well well Silvina just let me say one one last thing I spoke about the importance of people and I I, I want to sort of close my participation in this event by saying that uh, I was able to attract with the data that we developed in the multiple myeloma model, three highly experienced visible scientists. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Hussein, who now is seeing patients at the Cleveland Clinic and who was for 11 years the global lead for multiple myeloma at, at Celgene, which is the owner of the molecule. And then uh, also was able to attract Dr. Asher Shanan Khan, who is co-chair of uh, hematological malignancies at Mayo Clinic. And also Dr. Ken Anderson, who is the director at the Dana-Farber Institute of Multiple Myeloma uh, at Harvard. So these are the people that decide where they work. You don't convince them to, to work with you only by believing in the science and the opportunity to change the lives of patients.
Pedro, as they said in my small town, Tandil, your vibe attracts your, attract your tribe. So this is the amazing tribe that you are attracting because you are doing something positive for the world. But we need to wrap up. So I'll defer to be able to invite people to uh, follow you, to learn more about Standard Therapeutics and to do the closings as well. Thank you very much, Sylvie. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. A number of things before, before leaving. First of all, uh, Pedro, great having you. Great talking to you. Thank you very much. It's been uh, a wonderful, a one, I, we, I spent personally a wonderful time uh, talking with you and co-hosting this event with Delina Moschini. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And, and uh, this is a wonderful journey. And thank you for joining us. Okay, and to wrap up, if you need to learn more about Stardom Therapeutics, go to Unico Hunter, search for Ferro, see Pedro, see the, see the show. And if you want to learn more, click on the link that will take you straight to Pedro's PPM on his own page, and his team will help you with any further question that you may have. Remember, investments are great opportunities, but it also has risks. So do your homework, ask people, read the PPM, and then if you decided to invest, we will be super thrilled to have you in Pedro's team. I am there and I hope you are there too. Thank you so much. And don't forget to visit unicornhunters.com uh, just to stay, up, stay abreast, stay updated and stay tuned because very soon we will be hosting another one of these events, bringing you the best and the most interesting investment opportunities we feature on Unicorn Hunters. So see you next time. Bye.